Well, welcome to part three of hot rodding a Seiko 62 mass. We left things at the end of the previous episode, having stripped most of the calendar functions from the top side of the movement. We've removed the two die fix jewels here and here. We've removed the die shock setting from the uh, dial side of the balance bearing. Um, and I think I'm probably going to leave things as they are on this side and turn over to tackle the train side of the movement. But before we leave, uh, I thought what I'd just do, we, we noticed earlier on there are four uh, effectively dummy jewels on the dial guards. Um, and if you look around the track that the date disc sits within, we notice an additional number of jewels here. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine jewels. They look like spherical rubies that are embedded within the main plate. Uh, again, notionally to facilitate the smooth running of the date disc. And there may be an element of truth to that. But again, these jewels serve more of a PR function than an engineering function. Uh, we'll remember that this is a 39 joule movement, notionally. Uh, these nine joules, if you remove those from that joule count, bring us to 30. And you'll recall that we noted four joules, dummy joules, on the dial guards. Uh, and so that brings us to 26. So there are effectively 26 fully functional joules in this 39 joule movement. Let's turn the movement over and take a look at the train side. Well, what do we see here? We've got the movement model number 6216A. So this is the first edition of this high-end psychomatic movement. We can see a serial number on the movement, which you don't generally see on Soko movements. So I think what we'll do at this point is to remove the auto winding mechanism. And so in order to accomplish that, we have to remove three screws. those three screws released, we can just tease the bridge up, there'll be a little click as it releases its grip, and we see the, uh, the naked sort of base movement beneath. I'll just put that to one side and we can take a look at the reverse of the auto winding mechanism. Uh, this wheel here is the transmission wheel that transmits the, admits the rotational motion of the winding rotor through to the barrel, winding the mainspring. This part here is the pole lever, and so this, these two parts together um, are the functional components of this auto-winding mechanism. Uh, now, there is still, I think, a little bit of power wound into the mainspring, uh, and so we want to release that. Uh, again, this is a slightly hazardous operation uh, on camera, but let's see how we see if we can do this. Uh, the way to accomplish this is to put a screwdriver into the center screw on the barrel and we'll just wind whoops, I don't know if you can see that here, we'll wind out a little bit of 
tension and you can see the click spring here. So we'll just release the click spring and just let uh, down. I don't think there's very much power in this. There we are. So that's now let out all of the power from the main spring. And so we can proceed with the disassembly. Um, maybe before that I'll just point out the hacking lever. So you can see this lever just here. This is the hacking lever and that acts upon the fourth wheel. Let's just pull the crown out. So you can see that's the quick set position and that's the time setting position. And You can see that the hacking lever touches the fourth wheel stopping the the movement, stopping the, the seconds hand uh, initially but then of course that'll work its way through to the rest of the gear train. Okay, now uh, I think before we remove the train I'm going to remove those two die fix springs which I think I'm going to do off camera because you've seen how we do that uh, in the previous video. Well those two came out a little bit too easily. Um, I think someone's been there before and the uh, the two die fix springs didn't stay in their settings when I removed them. Next we are going to remove the the ratchet wheel on top of the barrel and we do that just by undoing the screw. And we get sight of the one of the main reasons why we're doing this uh, project, which is the uh, presence of a jeweled bearing serving the train side of the barrel arbor. Unlike the original 17 jewel 6217A that was fitted to the Seiko 62 mass originally, this 26 jewel 26 functional jewel movement has uh, a jeweled bearing serving the train side of the barrel arbor and if we flip the movement over we can note the presence of a bearing on the guile side just just here I, th I think we'll take out the pallet bridge next That's quite tight. Remove the screw. And then we'll just lift. That off and then remove the pallet fork. Next job is to remove the click spring. There's a small screw just here, so let's just loosen that off. And then we can just lift the whole spring and screw out. Okay, now I think we're, we're at the point where we can uh, loosen the three screw securing the train bridge starting oh, it doesn't really matter where you start start over here so that's one oh, there's the second one just here And then number three over here. And then we'll just lift the bridge away. Right, so what have we got now? You can see 
uh, the different components of the gear train. So here is this. Uh, this is the the hacking lever, the stop seconds lever. So that pivots around this point here. This is the barrel. The mainspring resides. This is the third wheel here, and we can see the uh, the escape wheel uh, hiding underneath. So I think we'll take the fourth wheel out first. So this is the wheel on which the seconds hand uh, perches. Okay, the center seconds. Uh, and then we'll take the, uh, well in fact we can't take the third wheel out until we've removed the, the hacking lever. Uh, so I think what I'll do next is to take out the escape wheel. Uh, then we'll remove the stop seconds lever, hacking lever. I think the screwdriver might be too... No, that's okay. And then we can take out the third wheel. Whoops. Okay, next we'll just get this barrel out of the way. Uh, and we can see the uh, jewel on the main plate side. Well, next we'll take the uh, center wheel bridge off. I'm going to save, I'm going to remove the bearing serving the center seconds on this plate till later so I'm going to get this out first so there's the center wheel bridge uh, and that's our center wheel so that's pretty much everything now on this side. We can't remove the center wheel just yet because that's held in place by the cannon pinion on the reverse side of the movement. So let's flip the movement back over again. And we can remove the cannon pinion for which we'll need a special tool. So I'll be back momentarily. Right, now next we want to, uh, I think, remove the cannon pinion, which is this shaft just here, on which we mount the minute hand. Um, we have a Burgeon tool for removing cannon pinions. You could probably just leave this off with a pair of tweezers, but to use the correct tool, of course, helps avoid damaging anything. Uh, so we'll just position that there. I'll just show you how this works. If we can get get it to focus, and you maybe heard the center wheel just drop out of the bottom as we did that. So let's move that out of the way. And we can now conclude proceedings by removing the rest of the parts on the calendar side. I think we'll start with the day and date driving wheel uh, over here. So we'll take the screw out. Uh, see in these early movements, these parts are all made of metal uh, as we worked our way into the 1970s quite a lot of this stuff was replaced by plastic parts uh, most notably in the 6309 movement um, let's, I think we'll take out the um, retaining plate for the minute wheel next Let's get the screwdriver properly centered. There we go. Okay. And then 
take out the minute wheel which is mounted on a steel shaft uh, and then all, we're, all that's left to do is to uh, disassemble the setting parts right now the order of play here is we're going to take out this setting wheel let's take actually a bit of setting wheel plate here oh. and that holds the that secures the setting wheel lever complete next is the setting lever spring which is this part here and then we're, we find ourselves once more in a slightly hazardous position we have a spring here that is working against the the yoke that sits within the clutch uh, so again we're going to call into service our plastic spatula Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll hold the spring in position and then maybe try and release the tension on the on the yoke. Oops, there we go. So it's the yoke out. And so the final part of the jigsaw, the reverse jigsaw, is to uh, take out the setting axle spring. There's the setting axle just dropped out from the bottom. Setting lever. And then if we pull the stem out, the clutch should just drop out. And we can actually just If we look closely at the teeth on the end of the clutch wheel I think we can just about see that one of the teeth is has been chipped off and that alone would account for the slipping when we're setting the time or engaging the quick set date so at the very least we're going to need to replace the clutch wheel on this movement uh, potentially also the setting lever wheel but I'm optimistic actually that that's all right that the sole cause of that slipping problem is this chipped tooth. Okay, well, I think to all intents and purposes, we're now we're now done. That's the movement, um, pretty much, or well, the main plate completely stripped. Um, I'm going to, I think, disassemble the auto winding mechanism and take that center seconds plate off the center wheel bridge off camera but I'll try to attempt to remove the mainspring from the barrel on camera probably in the next little section.